Okay, so let's take a look at uh, Docker Compose. And in your home directory, we'll create a folder called whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call mine Compose underscore one, just because I need a blank workspace. Now, in the same folder as these videos, um, you'll find this document pretty simple. Uh, if you don't have access to this document, it's pretty easy to create. We're going to create a, a file called docker-compose.yml because we've been using a lot of command line arguments. And those can be hard to remember, so it's easier if we create a file that we just call. And it takes care of all of those command line arguments. Set this up once and then don't worry about it anymore. Next time we need to, if we need to delete a container and respin everything back up, it all works. So these Docker Compose files are good for linked containers. Uh, you can set up entire frameworks with them and it's not that bad. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do an apt install docker hyphen compose. So pause the video, get that in. And then we're going to um, pico docker compose dot yml. Okay, so let's start with just one here. We're going to paste that file in. And so we've got services, and this is where we're going to start to list out our different um, Docker containers. And in this case, we've just got one that we're going to do for the beginning. And the image is going to be HTTBD latest. We'll pull that one in. You should have it. Put a space there. And for the ports, we'll put it down here under ports where there's this hyphen. We'll map port 80 on the local machine to port 80 on the Docker. Now for volumes, we're going to want to um, put the local volume that we we're going to use. And on this machine, you should have, if you don't create it, home Ubuntu website that has a file in it called file one. I'm going to hit control Z to background now. And if I LS home Ubuntu website, you can see I have a file called file one dot text. Make sure that yours has that. And then I'm going to type FG to get back in to Pico colon. And we've got to figure out where that HTTPD directory is. So if I go to my Docker hub here for the HTTPD Docker, we can see an example that shows where that directory is that's being hosted. It's user local Apache 2 HT docs. So I'm going to copy that. And we're going to tag this restart always in case it crashes, go ahead and restart it. That's a nice thing to have in these Docker Compose files. Okay, so let's do this simple one. Again, those are a lot of the simple things that we've done. And if you look up um, Docker Compose examples, you'll find lots of examples. We'll, um, we'll build some more complex ones here in a little bit. And so I'm going to run a Docker Compose up. And then I'm going to put the hyphen D because I want to spin this up in the background. Let's see if we did everything correctly. And so I'll do a docker ps hyphen a, and you can see that we've got this running. And if I go to my website, just on port 80, we'll see that we indeed do see file one.txt. Awesome. Okay, so that's the concept of Docker Compose. Now let's go a little further with it link some things together. I'm going to mkdir and I'm going to call this compose2. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kill that um, docker because now we can just run docker compose up from the directory. We'll always have it so that one's pretty much we can get rid of that whenever we want right. docker kill compose1 apache1 and again I could um, go in to the 
Just as an aside here. And underneath image, I could have put uh, container, and this is all in the reference, it's pretty easy to find, container name, and I could have called this my Apache, or something along those lines. And then our container name would not have been something that was automatically generated. Yeah, these things are pretty easy to find, that's container name, that's helpful to know. All right, so I did uh, kill uh, compose one Apache one that has that strange name, and I'm going to do a Docker rm compose one Apache one. Great. So now if I do a Docker PSA, again, we don't have any containers that we're working with. We're going to start from scratch. So let's go to Docker Hub, and let's do a search for... Drupal this time. And we'll work through this and then I'm going to challenge you to uh, figure something out. Maybe we'll work through it together. We'll see. So here's Drupal. And as we come down, you'll find that they are going to provide Docker Compose files. And so here's one that says Drupal with Postgres. And uh, we can see we've got the image, we've got ports, we've got these volumes that are listed here uh, that are important. And these are volumes that are within the container. And we have a Postgres here that's been linked. So these two will know about each other and we'll be able to access um, this Postgres database in a separate Docker from our Drupal database. And Drupal is a lot like WordPress. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this. And then we'll go through and do the things that we need to to make it work. And then we'll take it one step farther. So there I am. I've got nothing, right? Pico Docker Compose dot YML. We'll paste all that good stuff and let's go in and take a look if there's anything we want to change here. We've got our Drupal 8 Apache that works. I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, easy to locate. Container name, call this my Drupal. Volumes are fine. Restart always is good. Postgres is Postgres 10. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and say container name is um, my Postgres, that's fine. Uh, we've got some environment variables here. It's giving us a Postgres password. And here's how we pass in that hyphen E that we would see at the command line by passing in environment variables. Uh, variables. I could map a volume if I were to just look at the Postgres Docker so that the Postgres data was actually on the um, host operating system. And that's something that I definitely want to do. I'm not going to do it here. And you can see that we are on port 8080 being mapped to 80 internally. Okay, so let's save that. And let's run docker compose up. Oops, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put hyphen D, which would run this in the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit control C. It's gonna stop both of those now. And that's okay. Um, if I do a docker ps hyphen a right now, you can see that they were both exited. So it's real easy to do a docker start and I'll go ahead and start my Drupal first. I can do a docker start my Postgres second. Excellent. Okay. So now those two have been started and I'll check that out with a docker ps hyphen a and we can see that we are indeed running and we are not exited at this point. Well, we have to do the same thing that we did before with MySQL, which is go in and create a table, but let's do it with Postgres because it's good to work with Postgres. So I'm gonna run a Docker exec, it my Postgres bin bash, just like that.
and I believe we run PSQL hyphen U Postgres. And that should let us in. And I can do a create database now. And I will call this uh, Drupal DB. And there it is. And in order to list databases in uh, Postgres, you put backslash L like that. And you can see that we have a database called Drupal DB. If you're a Cyber Patriot competitor, they're going to have Drupal and the configuration files and stuff that are going to be important. Uh, just an FYI. Now to get out of our Postgres database command line, it's backslash Q to quit and exit. All right. So now I can go to um, my web page here. And we should see uh, on port 8080 is what we had mapped, remember? Save and continue. Let's test this out. We're going to do a standard installation. This is a Postgres database. The database name was, you know, I just did it and I, I've been doing this uh, often enough. Our database was Drupal DB this time. Database username Postgres for Postgres databases in default uh, mode. We gave it a password that was under um, our environment configuration in Docker Compose. The password for this is just example. We did not change it. And under advanced options for the host is localhost, we're going to give this the name of the uh, Postgres database, which is my Postgres. Just like that. And for table name prefix, I will leave that alone. We're going to go do a save and continue. Excellent. And now we're ready to configure our site and we'll have a nice Drupal thing going on here. Okay, so um, I'm going to ask for a couple of screenshots uh, for a turn in, but not now. We've got our Docker Compose that will get us to this point and getting in and creating that database in Postgres will be something you'll have to do later on. Um, I'll kind of explain what I'm looking for in the next video, but if you've gotten to this point, you've got your Docker Compose file, you've got everything you need to move on to the next challenge.